Hi, NATO here. Um, I want to do a, another video about um, Asperger's because it, it is still April, uh, Autism Awareness Month. I really haven't done very many videos about it, and I probably should have. And um, I want to talk specifically about making friendships, trying to interact with people that you just met, and what kind of experiences those are. Those are. Um, I'm actually, because I practice a lot, and I, I imitate politicians because I interact with politicians a lot, I'm really good at surveying or canvassing a room to where I can go into a room with people that I don't know, and I can literally fake really, really high, positive, bubbly energy because I just c mimic uh, what I've seen some of my friends that are politicians and lawyers and socialites do. I just copy their behavior. And I'm able to start in a conversation with people that way. And sometimes I'm actually successful. I have been able to get places and talk to people that I'm not supposed to get to or inter inter interact with. In fact, President Trump has actually called me someone, he's actually said, you want to write a book called The Art of the Ambush because every time I, he would turn around, I'd be there. And uh, if you would ever talk to Kim Reynolds, the governor of Iowa, she would attest to that uh, quality of mine, that I'm able to be places and get to locations. It's just something that I'm able to do. Um, I've done this with a lot of different people. It's um, just something that I'm really good at. In fact, the, I've dealt with the Secret Service quite a few times with this, and they, they actually thought I was a really cool person. You want to see my file with them. It's, it's uh, quite substantial. But um, they're good friends, and uh, it's they, they've always been really interested about my Asperger's. But all that aside, there are a couple things about me that just... I have a lot of problems with and I had actually had a couple problems with this this month one is I can start a conversation with someone and I've studied communication pattern between men and women the the, the speed of conversation the the, the nonverbal part of it uh, how they stand in relationship to each other and I'm actually writing an article about that but the problem is is that if they're not honest with their um, responses to, with me, explaining either their t happiness or unhappiness with my communications, I don't know that I'm annoying them. In fact, I I, um, I was actually doing an interview with uh, a good friend of mine about autism and Asperger's, and while I was at the restaurant, there were these two people who walked by. One was wearing uh, an Iowa jacket, and I wanted to go talk to them to see if they were from Iowa. After the interview, I went back to them and said, "Oh, hi! What part of Iowa are you from?" And she was like, "No, I'm not. Part, I'm not from Iowa. It's just I just wear the coat. I, I run a vintage clothing store. I'm someone who's done a lot of work with vintage clothing and antiques, and so I was just having a conversation. And they, they were receptive to that. They were wanting to ask me more questions. And there were two guys that also didn't know them. Like The two girls were there. They knew each other, but then these two guys showed up that were sitting with them that the two girls didn't know. And they were all four interacting with me before the two guys, for some reason, which I'm not entirely for sure of, and neither were the girls from what they verbally said understood why the two guys left. And I... They made a comment, and I said, I think I know why. And I answered based on just the observations that they had. And the two the two guys left. Each guy was more apt to communicate with me and say it was a pleasure to meet me. And they didn't communicate with the two women anymore. So I explained that on the pure psychological aspect of the observation. And then the two girls asked if I, you know, sit down because they wanted they wanted more information. And they asked for it, so I explained it to them, and we seemed to get along. I was actually really interested in the one girl's vintage shop. It's called the uh, Blonde Peach, and I recommend if you're in New York City, if you can buy it online, or whatever. They have some good stuff at good prices. So regardless of if they actually like me or not. I think the store is a good store and they get good prices, so I'm going to say to tell people to go shop there if they see anything that they like. But um, 
talking with them and communicating with them, I thought everything was going well. Uh, I asked Enoch if I could, if they wanted to be friends because, you know, I don't know. And so I just, I just ask, do you guys want to be friends? And they were like, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll do the social, social media aspect of it. And I don't give out phone numbers anyway. And so I did. And they were, they even gave me free cake because it was the one girl's birthday. But in reality, they didn't want to have anything to do with me. They didn't want to talk to me at all. And they could have just said something even somewhat subtle because I've written down and I've studied certain things that people can say which are indicators to leave. And I've um, committed those to memory. And I've committed specific gestures by hands or something like that that I commit to that meaning. And so I would have quickly, you know, parted ways and left they did not do any of those things and so when they weren't they weren't willing to be friends with they, they just kind of ghosted me and um uh, blocked me on social media but they actually added me too i i have no idea why and this isn't helpful for me for people don't talk to me about this type of stuff so i'm sharing it online so you guys can get an idea with, with kind of stuff that people like me deal with and uh, it's hard because it's it's embarrassing, but maybe this will help someone down the road with what this is. What this is, um, like I said, on a professional level, on dealing with pol politicians or anything like that, I don't have a problem. It's just trying to actually make real, genuine friends with with people. Uh, in Times Square recently, I came across. Um, a Romanian and a Slovakian woman, and that seemed to to go really, really well. Um, they they communicated. We did a selfie together on Instagram. They were entertained, and uh, to my knowledge, we are uh, one lives in New York, so there's a there's a friendship, there's an acquaintance there. That if I saw them, they saw me, they would probably say hi. I would probably wouldn't go up and talk to them again unless they engage me first, but it was a positive experience for these two girls that, you know, told me to, to contact them sometime, one about the store, uh, it, there's no contact at all, and I don't even know why, because it was specifically a thing about their business that I was interested in, and I have no idea what's going on. And then, um, on Twitter today, uh, there was a painting someone posted, and it was a really weird painting where the, the, the there's a woman holding a baby, and she had what appeared to be like an axe or a hammer of some sort. Actually, she was going to kind of clob the baby's limbs off, and then there were like babies on the ground with missing limbs. And she had a, a comment about it, and I was just really curious, like, where did this come from? I mean, how did this painting come to your attention? And it did not go well at all i just simply asked where it come from she said oh i googled um weird um paintings and i'm like well that leaves me with more questions and answers like why were you googling weird paintings i mean what was the point behind this because for me i'm a, I, I want to understand the reasoning behind something because that way i understand it this saying because or yes or no isn't something that's going to work for me i actually need to be said the, I googled it because I was in the process of searching this and this was the purpose. Now she shared it on Twitter there was some sort of public interaction she would have what should have been expecting by sharing something like that on that nature on on social media and the fact that she got really upset that I asked and it was, was kind of rude on a couple of things at least in my opinion and I was uh, on voluntarily rude back because I mentioned because um, I saw on her on her profile that she was from Newfoundland and I said oh, is this a Newfie thing uh, which is a Canadian cultural thing that the Newfies that I've talked to have always kind of said it to each other and kind of been goofing and, and laughing about it um, she took offense to it and then corrected me that my spelling of it was incorrect, which I thought was in, you know that was kind of cool on her on her uh, uh, part. Not only was that offensive, but you spelled it wrong. Uh, I thought it was funny, and I said, you know, I'm really sorry, um, but that's a really awesome comeback. 
so not only was that offensive, but you spelled it wrong. That I thought that was a good comeback. And because I didn't mean to, and I did start pop, did try to apologize. And the other people commenting, commenting on it, seemed to be just answering basically, is this a human experience? But this person uh, does did not take it as such. And I didn't mean for it to be offensive. And I and I tried to apologize, and I tried to wish them well. But it was not a positive experience for anybody, and this is a common problem for me. And so when people ask me, well, I have people from Asperger's, I mean, they seem functioning. They go around, they talk, they do stuff. Why aren't they able to get jobs and hold down employment and do this and do that? Well, this is a really good example of why that is. It's not that we are lazy or not wanting to contribute or participate is that when we do it falls apart and it falls apart really fast and then other people who are associated with us do like our work or um the project that we're working on it causes snags and so then we're told well we're not gonna have you work on that project anymore because people we have to work on with this don't want to work with you and that sucks I am lucky on my political stuff that I have uh, someone who's pretty high up in the government that has vouched for me. And uh, even though I have had Bernie Sanders slam the door in my face for saying that he goes to bed, literally goes to bed with corruption, uh, Google the Burlington, Vermont college case and his wife. Um, I mentioned that uh, Mitch McConnell should grow some balls. Uh, maybe he'd fix his little um gobble neck thing um that didn't go so well uh because he heard it <laughs> and his wife was uh, was was the one i mentioned it to uh even though she thought i was kind of being correct it was uh, a problem um but i mean I, i've kind of had these things it's like this is not having a filter that what comes to my mind is what i'm going to say and what i'm saying isn't a lie it's just a very clear observation and I don't mean any offense by it I'm just saying well this is something that I can see as an obvious truth um, you know but on for Mitch McConnell's end he was able to push through 19 confirmations today in the US Senate so maybe I uh, gave him some moment some uh, uh, motivation <laughs> uh, you're welcome I guess uh, to do some more work. Uh, I'm, I didn't. I mean, I I didn't mean to insult him. I mean, I've heard people talk about each other in way worse than I did, and I was even doing it kind of jokingly and um, a lot nicer than what most other people do. So we weren't on the Senate floor or anything, and I don't have to conform to their senatorial rules because I'm not on the Senate floor. There's not decorum. I, we were on a phone call anyway. That's just a little bit about what uh, living with Asperger's is like, uh, interacting with people. I guess that's that's why more importantly, like even more now, I just want to deal with animals. I I prefer cats and dogs now to trying to interact with people. Uh, it's, I don't even really know what to say. Like, I always make jokes about me hanging out with my best friend, and it's all great and cool until his owner shows up. Uh, <laughs> Because it's kind of true, I actually spend more time with, with, with the cat than I do the owner sometimes. Um, especially when I'm over at the cat's house. I'm actually spending more time with the cat than I do the owner. And usually the owner's not even here. <laughs> it's weird. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually got a bunch of jokes about it. Uh, one is, uh, I was at my friend's house and I asked him to uh, if I could sit down on the couch. And he just looked at me and started licking his balls. I mean... <laughs> You know, and, and then you know we were we were sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden looks at me, and he throws up all over me. Um, he because he's a cat, and cats do that. Uh, I guess you know if you don't know that's already a cat, that's kind of a weird setup. So it's kind of that twist in comedy. Um, yeah, so I mean, me and Gilligan, we've been having fun, and then his sister Ginger and I uh, have been having fun. She's got my pants covered in hair right now. She won't get off my lap most of the time. She's a good cat. Um, and then Gilligan will probably be using my head as a pillow in about an hour or so. Anyway, uh, that's all for this video. Like I said, I, I just want to talk a little bit about 
um, the Asperger's thing and some interactions that I'm having and just so you guys can get some more insight of what I deal with every day. All right, until next time, uh, peace out.